Yes, hello, beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. If you're a regular listener, you'll know that I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and encourager of souls. And I am so deeply grateful for the work that I get to do. If you're wondering what it looks like, I do these beautiful one-on-one angel sessions, which take place over the phone. They're about an hour long. And we have soul felt conversation and I bring in messages from the divine for you and you connect with the messages from the divine so it just doesn't flow through me it flows through you as well and then I offer a longer form of support called soul mentoring and then my classes I always offer something a little bit different every six weeks or so My latest class is creating your own oracle deck. I'll also be offering another cycle of my mid journey class. And then I have other things that will be coming up soon as well that I don't even know about yet, because that is what it's like for me to run a very divinely guided business is I often do not get the snapshot of where we are going until a few weeks before. And that works for me, so. If you'd like to learn more, I invite you to come to my website, illuminatingsouls.com, where you can sign up for my mailing list. And I'll keep you posted. I also post regularly to my YouTube channel and on social media, on Facebook. So lots of ways we can connect. But for now, my intention is to collaborate with the angels in creating a sweet oasis of love for you. But this is a place where you can come and receive love and light. Where I can keep you company for the next hour or so. And to share with you a little bit about the flow of each episode is the first 15 to 20 minutes. We talk about something spiritually related, nothing too heavy, nothing you have to stay alert and awake for. And I also bring in the angels. They're already here, but I love sharing them with you. And then the second part of the episode, I usually tell you a story or I read to you. And each episode is about an hour long because as an avid listener of sleep podcasts, that is my preference as a listener. Because yes, I do listen to sleep podcasts as I fall asleep each night. And if an episode is less than 50 minutes, that's 5.0, 50 minutes, I won't listen to it. Because the last thing that I want to have happen is for an episode to be over and I'm still awake. (laughs) That just emphasizes to me that I am not yet asleep. And I don't need that. So I find an hour long episode really works for me. But yet, if you are somebody that needs more than an hour, I totally understand. And I invite you to set up a playlist of these episodes and they can run as long as you want them to. I keep the tempo, I keep the volume the same, so there's no loud music, there's no loud noises that will startle you. I do my best to thread the needle between a little bit boring and also somewhat interesting. But I promise you don't have to listen to the whole hour. (laughs) It's not that important. But I find a lot of comfort in having 
a sweet, soothing, friendly voice to murmur, converse while I'm drifting off to sleep. And so I am endeavoring to be that for you. And I do know that some of you listen during your waking hours. So if I'm keeping you company while you go for a walk or drive to work or go about your day, I'm honored to be here with you as well. So I invite you to just take a deep breath in and let it out. Just let it out. Whatever your it of the moment is. We have all been carrying a lot lately. And I am confident that whenever you listen to this broadcast, even if it is 10 years from now, that statement will still be true. Because as human beings who care deeply, we tend to carry a lot. So if you feel that that's true for you, I invite you to take a nice deep breath in and just let it out. So as I record this, it is early morning. It is my preferred time for recording these and As I record this, there's a lot happening in the world, and I'm not going to talk about it. Today is November 3rd, 2023, as I record this, and if you're curious what I'm referring to, because you're listening five years from now, you can always just go Google it, because I'm fairly sure five years from now, Google will still exist. And it's a lot, on many levels, multidimensionally, it is a lot. And probably you and I are pretty similar in that we are deeply connected with our humanity and our empathy. And love is a core value. And so for those of us that embody this archetype, This is a tender time on planet Earth. So just breathe and let whatever you can go, go for just a little while. You can always pick it up later. When I used to do angel circles in person, I used to do them at a metaphysical store in Benicia, which is another town over here. And Josephus, which is the group of guides that I channel, would say, Leave your worries and your burdens at the door. You can always pick them up on the way out. I don't know why that always used to amuse me. So feel free to just breathe and release right now. And your angels are with you and surrounding you with love. That can sound like such a trite sentiment, I know, but I'm blessed that I have a visceral knowingness and experience of this divine love, and it is very real. It is supportive. It is restorative. It is empathic. It is compassionate. It is it is everything that is beautiful and wonderful and It is divine love. It is divine love. And divine love is here for you right now. And just so you know, you're not diverting this divine love from somewhere it is needed more more urgently. Divine love is everywhere, all the time. Even when it doesn't look like that is the truth, it's, it's like sunlight. That even when it is dark, because the earth has rotated, we don't feel like the sun is gone. We know the sun is still there. And so, even when we are cloaked in darkness, divine love is still here the way the sunlight is still here. And what we can do right here and right now is bring our awareness 
open our consciousness, our beingness to receive and become aware of this divine love that is always here and allow it to comfort you that God and the angels, the divine, they are absolutely aware of what is transpiring here on the planet, what is happening to you in your world and your life. And the energy is flowing right now to comfort and soothe you. So let's just take a nice breath together and Breathe in and exhale whenever you feel guided to do so. And I'm going to call the angels in. They're already here, but I love sharing the ritual with you. So we'll breathe again as we call ourselves forward into the heart of God. And beautiful angels on high. I ask that you join us here and I acknowledge your presence, that you are already here, that you have been with us, that you walk with us. And angels, I ask that you bring forward prayers of peace, prayers of healing, that you help to balance and soothe our hearts our spirit, our energy field, our physical bodies, our beingness in a way that will allow us to rest and replenish. And I ask that you hear the prayers of each of our beloveds listening to this message. So dear ones, just be present with the beautiful love of your angels and what I see in my mind's eye as they are filling the room, the space that you are in with a beautiful soft pink light. This light is filled with love that has been calibrated just for you. Just allow yourself to receive Receive this light. You don't have to direct it. You don't have to tell it what you want. It knows already what is needed in service to your highest and best good. And if you are preparing for sleep, I invite you to get cozy and snuggle on up in whatever way works best for you. And the angels are also shifting this energy to help you come into a deeper state of rest. Unless, of course, you are operating heavy machinery, in which case they are helping you stay awake and alert so you can be safe. See, the angels know what is needed right now, <laughs> so... Wherever you are as you're listening, the angels are calibrating this energy to meet you where you are. Oops. Wow. Lots of traffic noise this morning. I think though, as the weather changes, the, the noise that reaches our home from the freeway gets louder. So apologies for that. And I totally forgot what I was going to say, but the angels are here and they know. So let's just bring in more of that angelic love for you. There's such a sweetness flowing through right now for you. The angels are feeling a sense of gratitude for this opportunity to support you. Oh, I remember what I was going to reference. So... I think two episodes ago, I was sharing with you about the post-it notes on my desk that I can't seem to throw out. Well, one of the post-it notes that has been there for many months says, let the angels meet you where you are. 
And I haven't wanted to throw out that note because it is such a powerful reminder. Because I think sometimes we carry this belief that we have to raise our energy field, that we have to meditate, that we have to somehow profoundly shift consciousness to connect with the divine. But I promise you the divine can meet you where you are. You might not be aware of it, but they are there. So let the angels meet you where you are right now. And if you are someone that has a visual imagination, not everybody does, but if you do, imagine the beautiful angels are with you. Not in a weird stalker way, but in a way that is divine light. And they are shining their love upon you. And there's such gratitude flowing through for you. You know, one of the ways I contemplate this experience on earth is that we are all citizens of the collective consciousness. And the collective consciousness is the all-encompassing totality of consciousness in this realm. And so each one of us embodies our tiny subset of consciousness. Another way to say it is we are drops of the ocean. That is the ocean, yet we are a drop of the ocean. So each one of us embodies our little subset of consciousness in the collective. And so it is meaningful when we can bring love into our consciousness because it means our little subset of consciousness is now infused with the love and we are contributing to the collective. And you might think, what difference can that make? Well, to subset of consciousness that is next to you, it can make a difference. If you are bringing random acts of kindness to someone in your vicinity, it'll make a difference for them. And when the shadow energy is so intense like it is right now, the shadow wants us to believe if the shadow was the villain of the story, it would want us to believe that we have no power. And so we should just pull the blankets over our head, and not in a good way, even though this is a sleep podcast, I mean the metaphoric blankets, and opt out. So this is your sweet reminder that next time you are awake and perpendicular to the earth plane and out in the world, you have this immense power and light. You are one of the good people. That was my dad's highest compliment he would give someone. He would say, and he would say the person's name. So that Mary, that Joe, they are good people. And my friend, you are good people. I'm here to help you remember this about yourself. You are good people. And so you embody your goodness. You embody your light in your little subset of the world. Because it is what you can do. It is what you can do. And to those who travel in the same vicinity of the stream of life as you, it really does have the capacity to make a difference. A couple of years ago, I was at our local Walmart and 
our city, our city has some challenges and there's crime and people get angry. And so a lot of not so great things happen here. And this particular day and, and this particular Walmart is kind of a rough one. It's not, <laughs> it's not a high end Walmart. It is again, a little rough and tumble, but it's where I live. So sometimes I shop there. And there was this woman standing at the end of the checkout line as everyone was passing through. And she stood there and she said, as people were going through the line, she says, I'm buying your groceries today. Which was profoundly meaningful because many of the people who shop there are living paycheck to paycheck, if even that. And she stood there in this glory, in this beauty, in this generosity. And she must have paid for the groceries of three or four people. And it changed the whole vibe of that part of the store. As everybody was just marveling and receiving and blessing and praying and glory be to God and it was so beautiful and that's what the light lets us do my friends listen she didn't solve hunger or homelessness in our city but wow for a whole handful of us she made our day she helped us remember that we live with other kind generous people and no, she did not pay for my groceries. I was in another line, which is fine because I wouldn't have wanted her to because I can pay for my groceries gracefully and easily. So this is my reminder to you that you are the light and you are beautiful and your life matters. So take a deep breath in and release it all, just release for this moment, for the next little while, so that you can be here and receive. I love you so much. I love you so much. And the angels and I are here with you. So I invite you to drift off to sleep if that is your intention, to get cozy, and I am going to do my best to tell you some stories, even though in this moment, I have no idea what that means. I mean, I know what a story is. I just mean I have no idea what kind of content is coming your way or my way. We'll be in it together. Let's dive into the mystery of story time together. And so truly, I do not know where we are going for story time. I really wanted to record a new episode for you. And as I mentioned earlier, I am tired. I think we all are. This is a lot that we are navigating. And so there are different kinds of episodes that I do. And in some, I read to you from a, an old TV guide, a cookbook, an old publication. And I love making those episodes for you, but they take a little more focus because there's more editing and I have to contemplate where we go next. And it's not that it's hard. Okay. People have hard jobs in the world. This is not hard, but it's a little harder and I'm not up for harder right now. I, I need really, really super easy. And so from an editing and production standpoint, the easiest episodes that I do are the ones where I just ramble and tell you my stories. But I've told you most of my stories. Well, not really. I'm 61 years old. There are many more stories to flow. But in this moment, I don't have access to what those might be. So I told myself it would be okay. I have done two rambling, boring episodes in a row. This will just be the third one, <laughs> right? We're friends. And so the main reason I really wanted to make this episode for you was so that I could keep you company. That is, the world is so intense. 
There's something very soothing and comforting about having a loving, familiar voice that is with you right now, and I wanted to be with you. I need this. I need this sweet voice in in the middle of everything. I need the familiarity. I need the consistency. So here we are. What are we going to talk about? That is a really, really good question. So I'm going to ramble, guys. I don't know where this is going, um, but let's see. Let's, let's dive into the treasure chest that is my consciousness together. So as the world goes into crazy overload, one of the things that I have been doing to soothe myself is going into mid-journey and creating images of peace angels. So if you don't know what mid-journey is, it is an AI program. AI stands for artificial intelligence. And you put in a text prompt and it returns artwork to you. It's the program that I use to create the artwork for my Oracle deck, Earth Angels Oracle, in case you're interested. Yes, it is available for purchase. My little mini infomercial, very mini. I think it lasted all of 10 seconds, which is now over. I'm sorry, I'm very punchy because I was just going to make a joke about how you'll get a set of Ginsu knives if you order it in the next 20 minutes, but that's actually not true. I don't own any Ginsu knives to send it to you. But alas, I don't know why I said that, but I'm going to just keep going. Because again, as I have reminded you before in these kinds of episodes, this is a sleep podcast. So my hope is you're actually not riveted to what I'm saying right now, but I'm just keeping you company as you drift off to sleep. So there we go. So a little bit about Midjourney. It is really an enchanting program. And you just put in a text description of what you would like it to create. And the one that I'm loving right now, I'll read to you what the prompt says. A child's sketch of angels gathering together to send healing prayers and light to planet Earth. It is in crayon. So I think often we think of using Midjourney to create these beautiful artistic renderings of things, which it does very well. Right now, for me, I love the innocence of a childhood sketch. And so I am, through Midjourney, creating these really glorious, sweet, pieces of art that look like children did them, you know, where, where, you know, the people are varied and there's this brightness and lots of colors. And so I've been posting a lot of them on Facebook. So if you're not on my Facebook page, go on over there and you will see them. And these images are just bringing forward such a love for me. And I want to cry in the best way possible. It reminds me of the innocence. You know, there's a real naivete with the thought of praying for peace. Right? It's naive. It's like, how can it possibly make a difference? But it's also hopeful. And the truth is, it's about all we can do right now. So, these images that I am creating in Midjourney are just bringing me such a profound sense. And they really speak to my inner child right now. You know, one of the things that I find so fascinating about early childhood is this, this pure sense of beingness. Many, many years ago, I was standing outside under a full moon with one of my nephews. He was about two, so very young at the time. 
And we were looking at the moon and I said, where's the moon? And he pointed to it. He said, over here by me. Is that the most precious thing you've ever heard? It's over here by me. And I think it is such a beautiful representation of this innocence of the young heart of a child where everything is about them in the best way possible. So, I think as I look at these images, I know AI is creating it. So, it's not an actual child sitting down with the 64 box of Crayola crayons, but the AI has learned enough to know what kind of images to create. And so, I feel the energy of that innocence Right, that if a child is praying for peace, they believe that this prayer is powerful and important. And so I think connecting with these images is, is really good medicine for me right now. Because I'm praying for peace, for sure, but I am a little bit more jaded at the age of 61. I believe in angels and I believe in the light I believe in the power of prayer, but I also don't believe that my prayers or your prayers are going to make a whole lot of difference right now with what is happening on the planet. It sounds really depressing, and this is a sleep podcast, and I'm supposed to be uplifting you, but these images are helping me to remember the innocence and purity of prayer. That as adults, we get caught up in cause and effect. That if I pray, I should have the outcome I desire. Which is not how things work. Listen, much of life is cause and effect. But sometimes it's not. So, if as Laurel, I am praying for peace... What does that mean? Well, I'm bringing the prayer of peace into me, into my heart. That means that I'm not getting consumed by upset and anger and fear. I'm in the prayer. I'm in the vibration, the essence of peace, of love, of empathy, of connectedness to the humanity of others, to the blessings of all the life forms on this planet. So the prayer for peace most certainly flows through me and touches and changes me. So prayers for peace will certainly be supportive of you. And if that energy is flowing through you, then it has more availability to those in your little subset of the world. And maybe if enough of it gathers together and magnetizes, healing flows in unexpected and unimagined ways. So the part of me that's cynical, because yes, I do have a cynical side of me because I'm a human being. thinks, yeah, 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 but the part of me that is deeply connected to this work, which gratefully is often the loudest voice in my consciousness, I know that this is vibrational, and I don't know when these prayers are made visible. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't bring them into the world. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. I think about the prayers of my grandparents and my great-grandparents and going back generations. How they prayed for a better life for their descendants. How they prayed for more freedom, 
freedom from persecution, freedom to live authentically, freedom to have financial freedom to put bread on the table. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. And so our prayers have meaning just because we cannot visibly see the outcome of our prayers it does not mean that they are not meaningful so I have been going into mid journey and creating lots of images of prayer angels created in a childlike style and they are bringing me so much comfort because they remind me of the innocence and the simplicity of praying for peace. All too often we get shamed for things like that. You know, what are your prayers going to do? Well, I don't know, but it's what I got. I, I've shared this with, with you before and I just talked about it earlier. It's helpful for me to think of the shadow as the villain of the story. I, I don't really think of the shadow as an entity. I think of it as a kind of a place in consciousness we all have. We all have our shadow. It exists. But it's really helpful for me to think of it as the villain, right? And, and listen, the best villains are very seductive, right? They're not just out and out evil. They are, they're like your friend. They're your confidant, right? It's like, they're like, yeah, you don't really want to do that. Come on. What good is that going to do? Right? If the shadow is just completely obvious and said, you are stupid for praying. You would probably, you know, resist them. But if the shadow's going, listen, there is nothing to that. It's air. It's nothing. Turn on another episode of Real Housewives. Come on. You know you want to watch it. <laughs> that's, to me, that's what the shadow sounds like. Not that Real Housewives is bad or shadow-like. I just mean, you know, the shadow wants to disarm us. It wants us to perceive that we are impotent and we have no influence over anything. And so, so, this is my act of defiance against the shadow energy. I am freaking making peace angels in mid-journey. And do I think it's going to make a lot of difference? Well, I don't know, and it's not my job to know. What I know is it makes a difference for me. It connects me with light. It connects me with comfort. And you know what else? I know that it is a positive influence in the world because many of you are telling me that you love these peace angels. So I share this because it is such a challenging time right now to be a human being on the earth in many different ways. And I want you to know you've got this light, this beautiful light that is you. And don't let the shadow seduce you into complacency and capitulate to an action. And listen, action doesn't mean you have to put on your superhero garb and go out into the world and do big things. Maybe it's a prayer for peace. Maybe you reshare about a dog that's up for adoption on social media. Like there's so many different ways we can be bringers of light that don't require us to be visible and have a red cape out in the world. You're a good person, as my dad would say. You're good people. So you be good people. 
Keep caring. Keep loving. Keep being one of the good ones. Let people merge in traffic. anything better when you're driving on the freeway and you have to move lanes when somebody slows down and motions you over? You think, oh, thank God I don't have to try to fight my way in. Random acts of kindness, my friends. They are available to us and through us every day. Okay, well, I didn't know that this was going to be part of our story time, but that's where I'm going. Peace angels, beautiful peace angels that look as if they are drawn in crayon are bringing me so much comfort right now. All right, and um, again, keeping the bar very low because it's a sleep podcast and I have to fill another 15 minutes here and I don't think I have anything to share. Although I, I will share this very sweet thing that often, well, not often, I will share this very sweet thing that would sometimes happen when I would be teaching classes, especially at night, which I don't do anymore. So some of the classes that I teach are linear. So I know what I'm going to teach you in week one and week two and week three. So, so I sort of have an outline But other times I teach a process-driven class where we call in the light and we meditate. And and so I used to teach this one kind of class. And it started, I think, at 5 o'clock or something, which now feels so late to me. And Wes would come home and I would kind of be in a panic because I did not know what I was going to teach about. Which happens, for those of you that channel and our intuitives, you will know of what I speak because Earth Girl, me, was like, I got nothing. But meanwhile, I'm a channel and the angels are like, what are you worried about? We're right here. So Wes would come in and I would be like, I got nothing. I got nothing. I do not know what I'm going to be teaching about in 15 minutes. And Wes would say one or two words and it would be enough to get the flow going as a channel. And all of a sudden he'd say whatever he would say. I think you should talk about the colors in our garden, like something just totally benign. And all of a sudden the floodgates would open and I would be like, okay, go away. I got it. I got it. I'm connected now. And so that's kind of our, 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 one of our funny code words is I'll be like, I got nothing. And it's his cue to say something to break the log jam in my consciousness. So the reason I'm telling you this is I was just going to say, after I finished that whole soliloquy about mid-journey and peace angels and all of that jazz, I got nothing. (laughs) Like, I'm supposed to fill the next 15 minutes and I don't know what we're going to talk about. But I will tell you, this is going to be benign again. Lower your expectations of me keeping you entertained and do feel free to drift off to sleep now. I'm going to share with you about some of my crystals. If you are a regular listener, you will know that I am in the midst of an obsession of watching live streams on TikTok of different crystal manufacturers, wholesalers, and warehouses in China and I've been buying stuff from them. Now, I haven't been buying big things. I buy little things. Because right now, I'm in a phase of I love little things. So, I have kind of a shoebox size plastic bin here in my office where I have deposited many of my little things. And I have this little kind of half shell china dish that must have been my mother's because this would not have been something I would have purchased. And I put some of the little crystals in this little dish and it is sitting on my desk now. And so I love it. So when I'm doing sessions and stuff, I'll reach for a little stone 
and just kind of play with it. I don't know. It delights me. So maybe, <laughs> again, what's the code word? Lowering the bar of me keeping you amused right now. I will share with you some of the crystals that are in this little dish. Because maybe you love crystals. So, so not in the dish, but in front of the dish is an amethyst worry stone. So are you familiar with what a worry stone is? If not, they are flat stones that usually have an indentation in them for your thumb. And the concept being, you can hold it between two fingers and kind of worry, <laughs> like, like mm, fidget your worries away. Um, with the worry stone. So I have that here and, and I'm waving it at you as if you can see it through the microphone, <laughs> just to give you the whole visual. I'm still in my pajamas. It is dark out and I'm holding my amethyst worry stone and waving it at the microphone as if you can now suddenly visualize it. This is going to be a good time. Really? I promise. Okay. I just placed it down. Also in this little dish is a little piece of blue appetite. Now, before I started my obsession with crystal TikTok, I did not know about blue appetite. At 61 years old, how could I not know about a stone that was this delightful? It is bright blue, bright blue, blue like turquoise waters of the ocean blue. And it is gorgeous. And I had shared in another TikTok episode that West got involved in some of the, the crystal buying and he buys more than I do. And so he bought a big piece of crystal appetite, not huge, maybe the size of your fist. So <laughs> I'm losing my mind over here, just so you know. So we have a piece of blue appetite that is probably as big as Wes's hand. So, and he, you know, so, but a little piece broke off in transit. So I have a little piece of blue appetite in my little dish and it's so blue and beautiful. And I love it. I love this color blue very much. So within my obsession of crystal TikTok, there are subsets of things I am obsessed about, which include tiny baby hearts. So perhaps you have a crystal heart, maybe a rose quartz heart or an amethyst heart. So these are tinier versions of those and they come in assorted stones. Well, sign me up because I need a lot of them. I've been obsessed with these things. So I have two or three little ones in this dish. One of them is a form of agate. And so the bottom part of it is an amber color and the top part of it is crystal, like white crystal. And you can see the crystalline structure in this tiny heart. And it is so beautiful. I marvel at it. I love it so much. So that's one of my tiny hearts in my little dish of tiny crystals. <laughs> I also have three little bit bigger hearts. They're still small. One is a rose quartz because we always need a rose quartz heart, right? Come on, we're metaphysical people. But this one that I'm holding in my hand, I say that as if you can see it, but you, maybe in your mind's eye will see it, is a stone called flower agate which I did not know about before I started watching these live streams. So typically it is a cream colored stone, but it also can be a dark colored stone, but it has these kind of blooms of white in the stone, which can look like flowers. And there's a depth to it because it goes throughout the stone. So I have a really beautiful flower agate heart in my little dish. I also have an amethyst tumble that is heart like, although it is not a heart, but it's heart like, and I love it. It's purple. Purple is an awesome color. 
I'm a color person. Pink, purple, sky blue, and gold. And I'm a happy girl. I also have a tiny sphere, which you might know as a marble, <laughs> but in Crystal TikTok, we call them tiny spheres. And I don't even know what this is made of. I just like it. I think it's some form of agate, maybe moss agate or something. I don't know. It's something, but I like it because it's round. Who doesn't like round things, right? <laughs> okay. Again, set expectations. The bar is really low <laughs> on the content I'm going to be sharing with you here. And I sometimes put the little sphere in my amethyst worry stone because there's an indentation and it sits there very nicely, which I will do right now. The other thing that is in here is a piece, a little piece of hematite. I have little pieces of lapis. I have something called bumblebee jasper or bumblebee agate, bumblebee something, but it's bumblebee because it is gold and black. So there's a little piece of that in here. And just so you know, I have just ordered more tiny hearts and I have tiny hearts that are en route from China. I said to Wes, I said, listen, I know that this is a little crazy. I'm going a little crazy with ordering things from crystal shops in China, but I am not eating chocolate. Like right now I need a serotonin boost of some kind and in the past, it would have been food, big food. I would have been going to town on all the foods I don't eat anymore. So I think that part of me that needs the satisfaction of bringing something into my life that I love is finding delight in these crystals and making friends with the hosts. I don't know. In this big, crazy world, I love just being able to share a connection with a stranger halfway around the world. Yesterday, I bought something from the host. Her name is Starry. And we related to each other because she has cats and she's allergic. And I am having allergies right now. It's like, look, we both have allergies. See, the world is not a big, scary place because there's something that is just so intimate that people around the world have allergies and we love our cats and crayon drawings of peace angels it's the simple things right now that are soothing me so so my hope is I have not completely let you down in terms of the story time but I am very proud of myself that I have created almost an hour's worth of content for you because I was not so sure that was going to happen when I sat down in front of this microphone. I don't know how, how you're doing right now, but for me, this is a, this is such a weird experience. Wes had some co-workers stop by the house yesterday and he had a collection of some things he was going to show them that was in the garage and he wanted to know if I would meet them. And this was at, I don't know, six o'clock. By that point, I'm done. Like even on a good day, I'm done. And I said to him, I would love to meet them. I just can't. I can't people right now. I don't have it in me to be nice and social. I can be a very gregarious, kind person. I know I, I can and I am and that's authentic. But yesterday, I didn't have it in me. I was like, I would love to be that person for you and them right now, but I, I just, I don't have it in me. And I think so many of us are feeling that way right now, right? So you take good care of you. And my hope is your self-care is going to look like something that is supportive and healthy for you in the best way possible. 
but also don't require yourself to set the bar too high. Listen, do what you can to take good care of you so you can show up and be a light in this world, even if it is just a moment's prayer for peace. And thank you for putting up with my rambling into the mysterious treasure box of my consciousness so that I could bring you an hour's worth of content and keep you company during this during this transit that we are in. So I love you very much. I really do. It's not just a platitude that's real. I really love you and it comforts me to know that somewhere in the world you are listening to this right now and you exist and you are someone who cares deeply about others and you are a source of light in this world. So you comfort my heart in this moment to know that at some point in the timeline of life you will hear this message and we will be together for a little while. So thank you for keeping me company in this moment. Thank you for being here with me and allowing me the blessing of being here with you. I am so grateful for you. I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I wish you blessings. I wish you well-being. Thank you for allowing me the honor of keeping you company. And we'll talk again soon. Thank you.